Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial. And in the next lesson in our Learn Avid's Media Composer tutorial series, we're going on to the next part of our look at bins. Now you'll remember I told you we're actually talking about settings, but we're going to be going off in all these different tangents. Well, bins is one of those tangents because we started talking about bin settings and obviously the importance of bin settings. And obviously to talk about bin settings, we need to talk about bins. And in the last lesson, we took a pretty in-depth look, sort of an introductory look at bins. And we're going to continue that talk right now. And I'm going to show you some more cool things that you can do with bins, as well as getting different views inside of bins. And how you're really going to be able to tailor this to work however you really like to work. Maybe you're a visual type of person and like to see, you know, different clips inside of your bins, an actual visual thumbnail of them. Or maybe you just like the information. Well, guess what? We're going to get in and I'm going to show you three different views inside the bins that you can use and I'm going to show you some really cool tricks that you can do inside the bins to get cool previews without even actually having to call the clips up into the composer window. Okay, short introduction, let's just get into Avid Symphony and let's get started. Okay, so let's command tab into Symphony and you'll remember that this is pretty much exactly where we left off from the last lesson. A few more things I want to show you in the bin itself before we get into talking about the different views that we can see inside of this bin. Now, you'll remember we talked about creating our own bin view and I created this very cool clips view. And you'll remember that if I navigate down to the hamburger and I navigate up here to choose columns, I have all of these different columns to choose from. But you know what? What if what I actually want to have inside of my bin doesn't conform to any one of the options inside of the bin column selection window? Well, what do I do then? Well, I guess I'm really stuck. Well, no, you're not stuck at all because another great sort of hidden little gem inside of Media Composer is the ability to create any type of column that you might want to create. What I'm going to do is just cancel out of the bin column selection window and I'm simply going to navigate up to the top of the bin right here and I'm going to click in there and you're going to see as soon as I do, I now have a window that's appeared that I can type in anything that I want. So maybe what we're going to do here is I'm just going to type in time of day. And I'm simply going to hit enter and you're going to see now that I have a new column simply called time of day. What I can do now is simply navigate down. What I'm going to do is do a save as and maybe I'll call this clips with time of, let's make sure I spell this correctly, time of day, just like that. I'll simply say OK and what I can do now is switch back to the clips view just like that without the time of day and I can add time of day back on just like that. I know you're probably thinking, well, that's great and everything, but how do I actually get in now and tell Media Composer or Symphony what I want inside of each one of these different clips, you know, as far as the time of day goes? Well, no problem. What I can do is simply just click on the column and I can type in morning. And then maybe what I'll do is I'll type in uh, midday. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in evening. I know it gets a little bit tedious because then I have to type in, you know, morning again, and then I have to type in evening. And, you know, this is really getting tiresome having to get in and type all this stuff. I wish there was an easier way to get in and to add this information in quick and simple. Well, of course there has to be, or I wouldn't have brought it up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold Option on the Mac, Alt on Windows, and I'm just going to come down here. I'm going to deselect anything from inside of the bin. I'm going to hold Option on the Mac, Alt on Windows, and I'm going to click on the next, what would be the next uh, input that we're going to put right here inside of time of day. And as soon as I do, you'll see that as soon as I hold Option and click, I'm now brought to a context menu where I can actually select morning, midday and evening. A very easy way to get in and add this in. Now for some reason, let's just say this happened to be at midnight, you'll see as soon as I enter midnight and I hold option down again, you'll see that midnight has now become one of the options. So you'll see a very quick way to get in and organize stuff. Now what if I had a client that came in and said, you know what, I really want to see what the shortest shots inside of this bin are. And you say to yourself, well, okay, well, you know what, I, I can see this clip here, it's seven seconds long, and then, okay, well, this one here is, you know, just short of seven seconds, and this one here is six, but I wish there really was an easy way for me to sort this, you know, from lowest to highest numerical value inside of this bin. Well, you'll know that I can come in and I can actually select any one of the columns inside of the bin quickly and easily. What I can also do is once I have a column selected that I want to sort by, I can simply navigate up to bin and come down to sort right here, where you'll see the shortcut on the Mac, Command and E, Control and E for all of my Windows friends out there, and I can now sort numerical from lowest to highest. 
you can also sort alphabetically from obviously from A to Z. You'll see that what happens is that if I navigate over here to time of day and I hit sort, command and E, it's going to leave all of the fields that are blank in there first. It's then going to sort by evening. Obviously E comes before the M ID of midday. Obviously midnight is next and then morning. Now there is one other thing that we can do in here that always helps people as far as organization goes. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to navigate back over to the hamburger. I'm going to come back up to choose columns. Because what some people also like to do is they like to add a color to highlight a specific clip inside of their bin. And you'll see that I have the option of color right here. Now what I'm actually going to do is deselect it from there and I'm simply going to say cancel. Because what I can do is we'll just select a clip at random here. Why not the first one? I'm going to navigate up to edit. I'm going to come down to set clip color and let's just pick red just because I happen to like red. Now you'll see that nothing has apparently happened. Well it actually has. What I'm going to do is navigate back to the hamburger. I'm going to come back up to choose columns. I'm going to select color. I'm going to say OK and you're going to see now that this clip has been marked with the color of red. A little bit different from how it used to be inside a Media Composer but still a very handy way to work. What you can also obviously do is simply right click where the color would be and we can add in whatever color we might want. Very quick very simple. And of course obviously if I don't want to see the color column we can simply navigate back to the clips view and you'll see we're back to our familiar bin view and we're ready to move on to the next part of this lesson. Now I thought for fun what we would do first is I'm going to show you one of my favorite pet peeves when I'm editing. I'm just going to open all of these bins here and what I'm going to do is just do a save here just so I save everything up. And what I'm going to do here is show you a situation that I run into all the time. And I'm just going to take all these bins and I'm going to stick them everywhere. Now what I want you to do is just imagine, if you will, that instead of having five bins open, I have 55 bins open. And each one of these bins has 4,000 clips. And I'll just throw out that arbitrary number. And what's going to happen is when you go to open a project that somebody's been working on in a situation like that, it's going to take a long time for Media Composer to open. You're going to see what happens is that if I go back to the project window here, I'm just simply going to say OK to learn Media Composer. And what's going to happen is, is that Media Composer or Symphony is going to open all of those bins that were previously open and stick them exactly where they were. This can be exceptionally annoying if you don't use this fantastic little sort of undocumented trick. What I'm going to do is when I say OK to open the Learn Media Composer project, I'm going to hold Option on the Mac, Alt on Windows. And what's going to happen is, is that Media Composer is going to open the project and it's going to automatically close all of the bins. A great fantastic little organizational trick that you can use so you don't have to worry about what the person in front of you was doing. You can get in with a nice clean closed project. Okay so I'm going to navigate here back to my stock footage bin. I'm just going to double click on it. And let's talk about some different views that we have. I know that if I come back to my settings here, we're talking about the bin views. But when I say views, I mean to actually see what is going on with my clips. You'll see right now, I'm in a very much of a clip view. And you'll notice right down here, I have another drop down beside my actual bin view here. We can just set that to be clips again. What I'm going to do is just drop that down. And you're going to see in here, I actually have three different views. I have text view, I have frame view, and I have script view. What I'm going to do is I'm going to switch from text view to script view. And you're going to see that now I have all of the clips. And what I can do is say, you know, if this happens to be the first clip, I can say, you know, it was a starry, I don't even know if this is how you spell starry night in the city. And then I can say with the next shot, you know, it was still starry. You'll see the very easy way for me to get in and actually storyboard all of these shots. I can now say, you know, the sun was rising. Very cool. And you'll see this is how you can get in and have a producer really get in and storyboard your entire project before you even start editing. Now, me personally, I don't really like to work this way. There's really only one of two ways you're going to work. And when you're starting out, you might not like clip view. What you might actually like is thumbnail view. And you'll see thumbnail view. If I come down here, I drop down my my little drop down here. You'll see it's actually called frame view. And what I'm going to do is click on frame view. And you're going to see that I have all these little, you know, thumbnails in here, but they're so very small. How am I going to know exactly what is going on with each one of these clips? Well, no problem. What I'm going to do is hit Command and A on the Mac, Control and A on Windows to select all these clips. And I'm going to press Command and L on the Mac, Control and L on Windows to increase the size of these thumbnails. And I'm just going to increase them all the way. You'll see that's as high as they go. 
But I still run into this problem where they sort of stretch all the way across the screen and there's really no organization. And what I want to do here is I'm just going to increase the size of this bin to be full screen just so you can see exactly what I'm going to do here. Problem I still run into is even at full screen, I'm still sort of scrolling. So what some people like to do is they say, okay, well, I'm going to I'll move this one over here. I'll move this here. Maybe I'll move this one up here. Maybe I want to move that one over there. And you can sort of see where I'm going with this. This can be a bit of an organizational nightmare. Well, let's actually get everything nice and organized before I start rearranging everything. What I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate back up to bin and you're going to see down at the bottom I have a few different options. What I can do first of all is I can say align to grid and you'll see that everything snaps into position. The only problem is that my bin is still, you know, stretching way outside of the window and I'm still dragging back and forth. So what I like to do is navigate up to my bin drop down. I like to come down and I like to, let's do that again, let's make sure the bin selected here, it was just saving when I did that, and let's come down to fill window. This way I have all the clips inside the window, don't have to scroll back and forth, and now what I can do is start organizing them in the fashion that I want to have them. So let me just do that quickly. I'm just going to start by just grabbing random clips, and I'm just going to put them right beside each other, and you're going to see how this is going to go in just a second. Let's make sure we do this properly here, there we go. And we'll put this one here. You'll see there's really no method to my madness when I do this. It just happens to be whatever shot catches my eye. I'll just bring it over to here. Let's make sure we grab it properly and stick it where it's going to go. There we go. And we'll position this here. And you'll see again, no method to my madness. And we're almost done. You see pretty quick. But this is also a great way if someone wants to get in and rough cut something for an editor Guess what I just did? I essentially just created a rough cut and I can tell the editor, you know what I want? First of all, I'm just going to align this to the grid, but I want you to take each one of these shots in this order and drop it into the timeline. So you can see that working in frame view is actually almost an even better way than working in script view to really get in and storyboard your edit before you actually lay one clip into the timeline. Now, if all of that wasn't cool enough, there is one other cool thing that we can do inside of frame view. What I'm going to do is just pick what I think is the coolest looking shot here. Why don't we go with this shot right down here. We have this very cool sky. And I'm pretty sure this is a time lapse, but I don't know for sure. But one thing I do know is I do know that if I wanted to play a clip that was in my composer window, all I'd have to do is hit L on the keyboard. Well, I wonder what's going to happen if I hit L with this clip selected. Well, look at that. The clip will actually play right here in my bin. I can hit the space bar to stop it. And I'm going to press the J key to actually play in reverse. This is actually called JKL editing. J plays the clip in reverse, K will pause the clip, L will play the clip forward. You'll see, I can play, I can pause, I can rewind, just like that. And last but certainly not least, what I'm going to do is just navigate back over here. Let's just minimize our bin a little bit here. You'll see that I actually came out full screen here. There we go, looking very nice. And actually what I want to do is edit one of these clips into my timeline. Well, I could tell you that I'm going to take this clip, I'm going to drag it over here, then I'm going to mark some in and out points, drop it into my sequence. I just want to take the clip and just drop it into my timeline. So what I'm going to do is with the clip selected, I'm going to hit B on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows and nothing happens. Symphony is actually beeping at me. Well, I wonder why that is. Well, if you'll remember back to my bin settings, I'm going to come back to my bin settings. You knew this was going to come around full circle and here's where it does. What I'm going to do is enable edit from bin, splice or overwrite. Now what I can do is simply come over here and with that clip selected, hit B on the keyboard, and there's that clip inside my timeline ready to go. So I hope you've seen in this tutorial how crucial organization is and how powerful bins are inside a Media Composer and Symphony. You really have so many choices. And with these last two lessons on bins, there's no excuse why you should be disorganized in any of your projects. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.